Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this first video, I am gonna show you an easy way to do a weather paint job on a Lexan or an ABS plastic body. All right, so if you follow me on Instagram, then you've probably seen both of these builds. Um, if you don't follow me, I'll put the link down below. You can go ahead and follow me now. Um, I often get asked how I do these types of paint jobs, the, the weathered look. Um, the method is the same, whether it's on Lexan or ABS. The process for each one is slightly different. Um, there's just one or two extra steps needed to do on the Lexan than there is on the ABS. Um, but when we get to that point, I'll let you know where that is. Uh, so it's really easy. Uh, for this video, I am going to paint this Proline FJ body. This is Lexan, so um, you'll be able to see the whole process for doing the Lexan, and then I'll tell you which parts that you can leave out for when doing the ABS. So with that, we're just gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so what we're gonna go over first is the things that we're gonna need. Um, first things is the paint. When working with Lexan, you need to make sure that you use a Lexan safe paint. With ABS, you can use any type of paint that you like, um, whether it's enamel, uh, lacquer-based, uh, water-based. Um, you can even use the polycarbonate type paints like Tamiya or Pactra. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is go over some of the paint. Um, make sure that if you use any other brand, like if you use a Tamiya paint, make sure it says PS on the cap, or PS, that's the polycarbonate type paint. Make sure that that's what you use if you're using with a polycarbonate body. Um, same thing with Pactra. Uh, if you use any other type of paint, it's just going to flake off and you're going to be really unhappy. Um, what I like to use is Rust-Oleum. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's inexpensive. Um, it comes in a larger can. You can cover large areas. And it sticks well to the polycarbonate or onto the ABS. Um, make sure that you use this Rust-Oleum that's made for plastic. You can see it right there. It says it's made for plastic. Um, this works really well. Some people say that you need to use an adhesive promoter. I've never had to use it and never had a problem. Um, it all depends on, on how well you prep the body too before applying the paint. Make sure that you wash it thoroughly, dry it, and uh, take off any of the mold release um, spray that they might have done at the, at the factory or wherever the body's made. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna need, this is what you're, to do the, the, the weather paint job, what you will need is uh, this Rust Primer color um, by Rust-Oleum. This is uh, flat red, right there you can see. Uh, I like to use satin paints because it gives a more realistic look, especially if you're doing a weathered paint job. Anything that's been out in the sun for a long time, um, has been weather beaten, is like 20 plus years old, is not going to have a showroom finish. So, so that's why I paint on the outside of the body. And that's also why I use the satin finish. So for this FJ body, I am going to be using white. This is uh, heirloom white satin from Rust-Oleum. Uh, it's a slightly off-white color. It's not a pure white. Um, that gives it that aged weathered look. And I will also be using this uh, French blue, which is kind of a light powder blue um, look. And this is... Uh, I'm painting this for a friend of mine. This is the color that he wanted, so this is what we're gonna do. And we will also need some masking tape. Uh, I like to use the Tamiya brand masking tape. This is the best tape I've ever used. I've used, I've been painting for over 20 years and I've used all kinds of masking tapes. And this by far is the best masking tape that you can use for, um, for detailed work. Uh, it, it's really thin. It gets right into the grooves. If there's a lot of detail, it conforms to the body really well. Uh, it, if you've ever if you ever use this, you will never use anything else again. I guarantee it. Um, it gets nice crisp lines. You don't get a lot of bleed. Um, that's assuming that you prep your body correctly and that you apply this uh, well. That you that you make sure that you you get it to conform to the shapes of the body really well. The other thing that we're gonna need is a hobby knife with a number 11 X-Acto blade. You can see there. Make sure that you use a brand new blade. This is not a brand new blade, actually. This is really dull, so I'm gonna replace this. Um, the tip's broken off of there. 
uh, make sure you use a, a brand new blade uh, when, when cutting um, your, your tape. So that'll give you a nice clean lines. Um, you won't get tears or rips. It won't pull the, the, the edges up and you won't cause bleeds. So now we have all everything that we need. We are going to go ahead and prep the body. And like I said previously, you want to make sure that you wash it using warm soap and water. Um, dry it thoroughly before applying any type of masking tape or working anything on it. Since we are going to be painting this on the outside, this does have protective film. So what we're going to do first is we're going to re remove the protective film that's on this body because we're not going to need it. Alrighty, so we got the body all washed, cleaned, and dried. Uh, we're all ready to go ahead and start masking. Uh, before we do that, just a quick pro tip. Um, when you go to wash your RC body in the kitchen sink, make sure you wash the dishes that are in the sink already before washing your RC body, because uh, your wife, girlfriend, mom, or whoever will get upset and ask you, why didn't you wash the dishes when you washed your RC body? Uh, so just a little heads up there save you some headache and also don't use the good towels because uh you don't want to get yelled at for that either uh this is not a good towel this is a this is a towel that i use for drying so that i've lesson learned i've learned that before i'm just passing that on all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and use the window mask that came with the body and we're gonna apply the window mask on the outside first uh the reason why is because we're painting the body on the outside we're not really gonna we are gonna paint the inside as well too but um, outside is our primary objective. So we're going to use the masking that came with the body to do the outside. And then we are going to use our Tamiya tape to mask the inside because we want to keep the windows clear. And I'll explain why later. And uh, so let's go ahead and mask the body. All right, so we got the window mask on all the windows. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off the the headlights. Uh, this body doesn't come with masking for the headlights, so I'm going to use my Tamiya tape. Um, um, my friend might want to use some LEDs. It does come with the decals to go over it, but the LED lights will show through the decals. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mask these off so that it will be clear so that if he wants to add LEDs behind the headlights, he can. All right, so I got the windows masked on the outside. I got the headlights and the taillights masked on the outside as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and mask the inside. The reason why we are masking the inside um, is because on a Lexan body, um, as you wear the, the paint on the outside, because we are gonna be painting the outside primarily, um, all that paint that gets scratched off is gonna show clear if we don't paint the inside. So we're gonna spray the um, the flat red paint, we're gonna spray that on the inside as well. So that way, the more the car gets uh, rusted, and, or not rusted, but scratched and worn, the more rust that's gonna show. So technically, I guess it would look more rusted. Um, this is the one step that you don't need to do on an ABS plastic body, because um, obviously you can't see through the body. Um, so that's one step. The other step is that you don't need to mask off the inside of the windows on an ABS plastic body, because typically they don't have windows. Um, they do, well, they do have windows, but they don't have clear plastic windows molded into it. It's usually a separate piece, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so, th so that's the one thing that's different between painting the Lexan body versus the ABS body is that we're going to mask off the inside so that we can paint the inside of the Lexan body. And to do that, we're going to use our Tamiya paint or Tamiya masking tape, not Tamiya paint. Um, you could use Tamiya paint if you want to, but we're not going to. Uh, we're going to mask off. The inside of the windows, we want to make this area slightly bigger than the outside. That way you can't see the edge of the inside paint um, from the outside. So we're going to go ahead and start that. I'll start over here on the side window. You don't have to be as tight or as clean 
when doing the inside. Um, this is just to prevent paint from getting on the on the window surface. So you can be a little bit uh, a little bit more rough with your your cuts here. Um, that wasn't quite long enough, so I'm going to have to use a little bit more. We do want to make sure that the edges are all the way sealed, so make sure you rub it down nice and good. And using your X-Acto, not using a lot of pressure, we are just going to trim some of this tape around the outside. There you go. That's as, that's about as uh, as close as we need to get on the inside. You can see it's not super uh, close, not super clean. That's fine. That's all we need. So we'll move on to the other windows. All right. So we got all the masking done on the inside and outside. All the windows, the headlights, the taillights, and you can see here on this window and you see along the edge here how the masking on the inside is slightly larger than the masking on the outside that is so that that edge on the inside won't be seen from the outside uh hope that makes sense um once we get paint down it'll make a whole lot of sense once you actually do the process it'll make total sense and you'll completely understand um so anyways we're ready for some paint uh we are going to apply our flat red primer first and what we're going to do is we're going to apply the inside and outside at the same time the inside we're going to do a little bit lighter coat we're not too worried about getting um, full coverage on the inside uh, we do want to get a decent amount of coverage um, if there's some light spots where you can kind of almost see through that's okay um, we kind of want to try to minimize as much paint as we put on there um, we don't want the body to be super heavy um, and it'll bond better too once you have some lighter coats on there. So um, the outside, we're going to make sure that we do get some good coverage. And then the inside, we're just going to make sure we get just enough coverage so that there's no transparent spots. But if there's some spots that you can kind of almost see through when you hold it up to the light, that's okay. We're not going to worry about that too much. So let's go ahead and go on outside and we'll apply our paint. All right, so we got our rushed primer laid down. It's on the outside and on the inside. We have just enough to cover the body, but not too much that it feels heavy, which is perfect. Our next color is going to be our satin heirloom white. Uh, we are gonna concentrate putting this on the roof and on the grill, because this is the on the FJ, that's what the where the white was at, was on the roof and the grill. Um, again, we're not gonna worry too much about getting 100% coverage. We don't want to put too heavy of a coat. Uh, we want just enough just to cover this. If a little bit of the rust does show through a little bit, that's perfectly fine because we're going to be sanding through this paint anyways. Um, again, we're going to concentrate on the, the roof and the grill. Um, I might paint, paint a little bit here, uh, get a little bit of overspray down here on the rest of the body, which is perfectly fine. Um, it's not going to hurt it. Uh, but we do want to make sure that we do get good coverage or decent coverage on the roof and grill. So with that, we're going to go ahead and go outside and spray our heirloom white. All right, so it's been about an hour and our paint is now dry enough for us to go ahead and move on to the next step. Um, the next color that we're going to be spraying is the French blue. Um, but we're gonna to need to mask off the white using our Tamiya masking tape. 
Um, again, make sure you use a brand new blade on your X-Acto. I have a pair of scissors here to cut off the, the tape and we'll go ahead and mask it off. All of our masking is done. Um, I used some paper towel here up on the roof so I didn't have to use so much masking tape. Uh, grills all covered. Uh, next step is to go ahead and go outside and we will now spray our next color, which is the French blue. Okay, so it's the next day. Uh, last night I removed all of the masking from the roof and the grill. Uh, set it aside in a warm, dry spot outside and allowed the paint to cure overnight. Uh, the reason why we want to make sure that it's 100% it's cured is we, in, in our next step, uh, we're going to be sanding and we want the paper to do the work of actually sanding and not rubbing. We don't want to rub the paint off and you can tell that if the paint is not 100% cured when you start to sand, you'll get little balls of, of paint. We don't want that. You want to, when you start sanding, you want dust. Uh, so our paper that we're going to be using is we have um, some waterproof uh, sandpaper. I picked this up over at the local hobby shop. It has several grits in here and what we're going to be using is the 600 and uh, 1000 grit papers. Uh, the reason why we're going to use these finer grits is we want to take our time, we want to go slow, and we don't want to leave scratches in the paint necessarily. We want to um, make it look like the paint has been worn and weathered. We don't want to look like it. We don't want it to look like it's been sanded. Uh, using uh, rougher grit papers, it will look like it was sanded because it'll have the sandpaper lines, and we don't want that. So, um, because we are using finer papers, uh, we're going to want to do this under some running water. Uh, I suggest doing this outside uh, or in a, in a utility sink. I'm going to be doing it in my kitchen sink just because that's where the best lighting is and um, better control over sound and everything for the for this video. Uh, but it will make quite a mess. So I suggest doing it outside or like I said in a utility sink if you have one. Uh, you can use a bucket. Uh, it, you're just going to need to um, sand and then dip and then sand and dip. You're, you're going you're to need to rinse this paper off quite often. Uh, don't let it get clogged up. Uh, this paint will clog up this finer paper uh, really quick. So with that said, let's go ahead and head out to the sink. Okay, we're going to start off with some 600 grit paper. Uh, before starting the weathering process, I suggest doing some research, uh, maybe go online and Google some images uh, for the body that you're that you're painting. The, in this case, the FJ40. Uh, so what I did is I went online, looked to see where the weathering occurs on a real car. Um, I did notice that it, it rusts here along the, the hood, the fenders, the roof line. Uh, so that's what we're gonna concentrate on first. Uh, we're gonna use the 600 paper for that, and then we'll use the finer paper to uh, for some of the, the flatter spots. Um, by flatter spots, I mean like, uh, this, this 600 paper is gonna cut quick. So we want to be careful not to use it along any edges unless we want those edges to show through. Uh, the finer paper we're going to use on edges where there's a little bit more detail like here on the doors. Uh, that's because any of the edges where there's details, those raised edges are going to get sanded through a lot quicker. So we want to use the, the finer paper for that. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the water. Um, I have it set so it's warm. Um, you can use cold water, doesn't matter. I prefer warm. Wet the paper first. Wet the area that we want to sand. And then just start sanding. I'm not using a lot of pressure. I'm basically just sanding over it lightly and you can see it goes through really quick along the edges so we want to try to stay away from the edges too much we don't want to unless we want that area to be sanded through you can see see how it gets clogged up we want to rinse that keep things clean make your, your life a lot easier during this whole process.
So I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, continue sanding and uh, we'll come back. So I've moved on to the thousand grit paper. Uh, for this, I am going to do the the flat surfaces, like on the doors, uh, the top of the roof, the top of the hood. Um, just kind of giving it a, a sun beaten look, not necessarily trying to go through down to um, the rust color like I did with the with the rougher paper. This one is just kind of to, to soften everything up. And you'll notice that as you're sanding, this body is going to be super smooth. It's not going to feel like it was painted on the outside at all. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and use that paper. Sand here on the doors. Make sure you rinse that paper often. You can see here, I did a little bit on this rear quarter panel. You can see, I don't know if you can see it in the, in the camera there, how it's right, right here along this edge. It's nice and uh, it, 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 it's super smooth and you can see the paint uh, worn. And it doesn't look sanded. It looks like it's been worn through. That's what we want. Alrighty, so there you go, um, completely I think I'm good with uh, how it's come out so far. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna go any further than that. I don't want it to look super rusty. I just want it to look weathered and old. And I think that that does it. Uh, once all the decals are applied and you can do a little bit more detailing, it'll look a lot better. Uh, so for now, I'm gonna go ahead and and dry this off, remove the, the window mask and everything. And then we'll take a look at what the final results are. Oh, and uh, as you can see, um, you'll go through quite a bit of paper. Uh, I went through all that paper that I showed you at the beginning. Um, just because it still gets clogged, it gets worn. Um, you'll just have to to switch it out as you, as you find that you, you need. Uh, once, you, once it starts not uh, cutting through the paint, uh, you'll know it's time to change it. That's why you need to, to keep it under running water and keep it clean. Um, it'll last a lot longer. If I didn't do it under running water, I would have probably used about three or four times more of this of this paper. So let's go ahead and go back into the workshop and uh, I'll unmask this. All right, so there you go. We are all done. Um, I removed all the window mask off of it. Um, the st stock window mask that came with the, the body did leave a little bit of residue like right there and uh, here on the back window. Uh, if that ever happens, all you have to do is just take some masking tape And just, just dab it here on the on the spot and it'll remove that um, that uh, that residue. You can see here in this back window right here this uh, this little bit of residue here. Just do that a couple of times. It comes right off. Super easy. That's the basics of uh, a weather paint job. Um, after this, it's just a matter of uh, how far you want to take it with the with details. You can just leave it as is. It's perfectly fine. Um, the next step would be to apply your decals. Um, over the decals, uh, what I like to do is I'll spray some matte clear like this over it. That helps the, the decals blend in with the body a little bit better and it'll look more, more realistic. Uh, the other thing you can do is um, detail some of the body lines. Some people take a Sharpie, like a black sharp, five tip Sharpie, and will uh, do those lines. I don't like doing that. What I prefer to do is get a uh, soft lead pencil, mechanical pencil like this, and I'll run it along the edges 
of the the seams of, of the body lines that to me looks a little bit more realistic um, they don't stand out as much and then what you can do is you can use some whole red like this from Tamiya we'll focus there's the part number XF9 uh, you can do that along the edges in here um, you can create a wash with this and uh, make it look like some of these hinges are dripping and you know along the drip rails and stuff like that whatever you want to do and then uh, you can also get this khaki XF49 and what I do is I'll get one of my little um, paint dishes like this I'll put some water in a little bit of this in there not a lot you want mostly water you just want to add this to as a little bit of color and then what I'll do is I'll take that with a paintbrush and I'll brush it on to the windows let it dry a little bit and then rub it off with my finger or with a paper towel um, I'll also do that with the windshield wipers so you can get the windshield wiper marks. Um, that'll just make it look like the windows have been dirty. Like right now, the windows are too clear for the body. Um, I'll probably end up doing that to it as well. And then another option is to use some of this uh, metal effects paint. I got this at uh, my local craft store. Uh, it's called uh, Modern Masters uh, Metal Effects. You can see there. It has an iron paint and an activator. Uh, what you do is you apply the iron paint, let it dry completely, and then you brush on the the activator. They do give you uh, a spray pump. Uh, I recommend not using that. It it makes a mess, and you use more than you need to. Uh, just use this. Use a paintbrush and brush it on onto over this paint once it's dry. And what this does is that actually this actually has iron in it, and this activator will actually cause the iron in this paint to rust. So you get real rust. Um, the thing is, though, is if you plan on doing any, uh, applying any of the, the matte clear, make sure you, you do the matte clear first, then you do this. Because uh, if you do this first and then the matte clear, the matte clear will basically just get rid of the rust that's on here. And you'll just end up with um, dark gray paint on your body, which looks horrible. So make sure you do matte first then the rust after all right that about does it we're all done um if you have any questions or comments go ahead and leave them down below i'll try to answer as many questions as i can if you have suggestions for videos in the future whether it's rc cars slot cars scale models or art i like to do it all I'd like to stay, stay busy and stay creative um, if you use this method on one of your builds i'd like to see what you do go ahead and tag me at my build projects on instagram you can follow me there as well um, if you'd like to see more of these videos, uh, go ahead and make sure you subscribe. Click the notification bell. You can also visit my store, shopbuildprojects.com. Pick up a scale antenna like this. I'm going to put one of these on this build. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time.